Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not an editing tutorial, but it means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own project. If you're like me and really enjoy having something on while you work, sometimes the content you like is very visually engaging, and you're several hours in and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your project as you would have liked to. So that's where I come in. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. I have gum in my mouth, so I feel like I have a little bit of a mush mouth thing going on, but um, it's hard to hide gum and chew it at the same time. So it is what it is for today. Happy Monday to you. Today is Sunday, the day before that I upload this video, and it is in the 60s in my house, mid 60s. Kitties are very cold. Um, here is a picture of them I just took before I came up here to film. They have been glued to me when I've been on the couch. If you follow me on Instagram at Paws and Pearls, spelled out A N D, offline, you will see that I posted a picture earlier uh, this day, this Sunday, of them. One on, I usually sleep on the couch every now and then, especially last night because it was heckin' cold in my bedroom, and my partner can tolerate colder temps going to bed than I can, so I was like, I'm just gonna sleep downstairs, because at least it's pseudo warmer than it is upstairs, because the insulation in this house is crazy. Um, but when I woke up, sort of, was just hanging out on the couch, um, Koji came into like the tummy area, I was like sleeping like this, and he came into my middle part, and then Kabu was down by my legs, and so they each had their own little nook on my body to keep warm because I had the, the notorious or the infamous cozy up blanket that anyone who has it, whether it be a cat or a human, will want to take a nap with it, and it's Kabu's favorite. She loves to knead it and suckle it, and then Koji will knead it too. He, do he doesn't suckle like she does. Um, but they both love that blanket, and now that it's chillier, thank goodness, um, they definitely want to cozy up. And you'll see on my hands, if you are an avid viewer, we had the August, most of August, there was a knit along with the Mitt the Family pattern, and the finished product has come in handy. I brought these out on Friday, actually, and had them on while I was working at my my desk while I was on the clock because my hands were crazy cold and I turned on my space heater. I have a space heater. Well actually before I tell you about that let's get started. So you guys may have noticed that last week I was on I think episode 10 of the knitting the socks for my little girl cousin. Finished that, thank gosh, on Friday. So I started, I cast it on on Friday um, the sock that I'm going to be knitting for my cousin. And if you also remember recently, I was showing you all the yarn that I got during the Knit Picks up to 40% off sale, and these um, Chroma colorways were $6.99, and originally I think they're like $13.99, definitely close to $13, $14, and I got them for about half off. And this was one of the colorways I was debating on using for my cousin, because the other one I just used was around the same colors, just different design, and I'm going to be using a teal solid color for my cousin's son. So we're working on my cousin. She's going to have the same size, so I had to cast on 64 stitches based on Ann Bud's recommendations, and I am going to do a different type of cuff where I'm doing a two by two rib knit. For my cousin's daughter, I did a one by one, 30 rows all the way down before I started shaping, or started the heel flap and shaping the heel. This time I'm going to do about 10 of just rib and then I'll do knitting the rest of the way down. So let's just keep going with that. Um, but yeah, I was super cold. I had brought my space heater home from work last Saturday. So it's two Saturdays ago by the time you see this. 
I brought it home because I already had one here from when... Why did I buy it? Because I was regularly just cold in this this apart, this townhouse. It has like hardly any decent insulation. I'm used to having either uh, radiator heat that's controlled by the building or I have had central heating in a smaller better insulated unit so this is pretty drafty here so I had a space heater add in another and then yesterday well actually on Friday I decided to bring one downstairs and use it like right under my desk and it was nice and warm and wonderful and even my partner came home and was like dang it's your your computer's on fire and I'm like no it's just my space heater and the cats wanted to hang out with me because I was like the coolest girl on the block and it was just nice um, however last night Saturday night I turned it on again I asked my partner because I know they have a lot more computers than I do so they get hot faster in their desk area and they're like yeah sure that's fine you can turn yours on and I turned it on I went in the kitchen to get a bowl of cereal and then it got quiet like you could hear hum of electronics and things and all of a sudden nothing and I was like uh oh was that me and they're like yeah so with them being home with our water cooler that we have now my extra computer from work, the AC plugged in, though it wasn't running at the time because like, hello, we had the heater on, um, it shorted out the circuit, so he's like, don't do that again. So I have to make sure that everything is copacetic before I run my heater, which is basically just running when they're not home and running all of their electronics. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, but I did have both computers on of mine. I had my work computer on because I, I usually always leave that one on and then I had turned on my home computer because I was working on some other stuff. And yeah, so lo and behold, now I have to be extra careful to run my space heater and then they're like, well you could just turn the regular heater on, like the central heat. But uh, I'm just... It's definitely warm or cool enough now to do that, but I just want to have a little bit longer where I have selective heat. However, I'm in my sweater, I have my hand mitten things on, so you kind of are like paws and pearls. If it's time to run the heat, it's time to run the heat. But I just didn't have my full fall that I wanted. It came closer to being cool faster than I expected, but that is the case. We also did predictions at work on Friday on, or no, I think it was, yeah, Thursday, because Thursday was the first of the of October, so they, uh, my supervisor was like, hey, let's take some bets on what we think Halloween weather is going to be. and. It, she, she mentioned trick-or-treaters, and I was like, who's going to be trick-or-treating? Though 2020, you know, come at me, bro, 2020, it's the, one, it's the one year in a long time where Halloween actually fell on a weekend, like a Saturday. So it would be the perfect year for trick-or-treaters because they don't have to worry about trying to get home after school, getting their costumes together people who would normally have costume parties can have it right on the day instead of having it the weekend before or the weekend after and it's just like the perfect year for a Halloween um, but because of COVID it's unless you're crazy you're not really going to be having a party and unless you're really crazy you're not going to let your kids trick-or-treat and touch strangers doorknobs and or you know their doorbell or knock on their door and take candy from people who you don't know what they've been doing behind closed doors I mean you kind of don't ever anyway know what they've done to the candy you know if they farted on it or I mean I don't think anyone's that crazy but trick-or-treating is a risk in and of itself but it's even more this year so I really don't think anyone's going to 
But when she mentioned trick-or-treaters, I was like, do you remember what's happening right now? But anyway, I cast my prediction because there have been two times since I've lived in the Midwest that it has been winter weather on Halloween, where it is hailed or snowed so bad that people were just like, forget it, I'm not doing anything today, so they they didn't trick-or-treat. Um, people, you know, stocking up on candy, had abundance of candy. There was so much candy being brought to work because people who were preparing for trick-or-treaters didn't have any, so fun for me, fun for me. I'm, I'm all for taking some free candy back then, but not so much anymore. Um, I'll still take free candy, just not from your hands. So I, yeah, I was like, you know, this is going to be the year that it's going to be nice weather, it's going to be cool, but not too cool, no wind, no rain, no nothing. And of course, like, why wouldn't it be the best day to go trick-or-treating on a Saturday, the one day of the series of Halloweens when all of the stars are aligned to have the perfect day for trick-or-treating and parties, and yet we're stuck in the house. So I was like, of course, of course, that's my prediction. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any cool prizes to give to you guys, but do you have any predictions on what this 2020 Halloween is going to look like? Do you think it's going to be rainy, snowy, you know, based on your, your local weather? What are you expecting? And I guess that's stateside. I don't think anywhere else do they celebrate Halloween quite like we do here. So if you're from overseas, um, I don't know what you guys do. Do you guys do Halloween? But on top of Halloween, it's still very early into the month of October. So I wanted to, for this week, one more time, give you a last call to tell Paws and Pearls your recommendations of what I should add to my invisible shopping cart to celebrate my birthday month, which was last month, September. If you missed my other videos where I had advertised it, I, for the month of September, was opening up myself to you to say, hey, if there's some cool product out there that's knitting related, some cool indie yarn dyer that you really enjoy, some kind of product that you think that has been a game changer in your life that you think I might like, to let me know in the comments uh, what those products are and then ideally at the end of September I would collect all of the suggestions and then form a curated shopping spree for myself to buy some of the stuff that you guys had recommended and then I would show you. And so, so far I've received a couple really cool recommendations that I have written down, but I wanted to say if you are new here and haven't yet watched those videos or you're a regular and just didn't watch those yet, that for this first week, um, the three videos that I have Mondays, today, Wednesday and Fridays are going to be my last call and then after that I'm going to make the make the leap and get the things that are within budget and of my tastes or look interesting. They might not always be my taste, but I'm willing to try some things out, so if there is anything then do let me know. And then of course, if later on in the year you you just find these videos and you're like, oh no, I missed out. Fear not, because in December, when it's holiday season, here in the US we do Christmas like nobody's business. It's all about the gifts. You're probably already hearing Christmas music or seeing holiday collections and things like that coming out, toy books, catalogs. I'm seeing a lot of seasonal stuff popping up on my Instagram feed right now, so it is Among Us. 
they're like, forget Halloween, forget Thanksgiving, it's all about Christmas. But um, another thing I like to do, because I buy stuff for myself year round anyway, because I'm a grown up and I can, um, I try to do something extra special for Christmas because I no longer get gifts, you know, like you would when you were a kid. So nobody says, hey, Paws and Pearls, what do you want? What do you want for Christmas? Nobody asks me that anymore. <laughs> so I love to be surprised, and most of the time I get really cool surprises, but there's still things that you know you want. You know, whether it be something practical to make your life better or enhance what you do, or it's just something frivolous and fun that you just had your eye on for a while. That's kind of how I feel about Christmas, and so I wait until I've seen what everyone got me, and then I, I don't go ham, but I go a little bit, you know, whatever. After I've spent all my money on other people, then I then I spend a little on myself. So I have some ideas of what I want to do for my Christmas gift because based on what I'm doing for my birthday, uh, I can't do it all for, for September slash October, so I'm waiting. Plus, I'm spending money on other people for some upcoming events, mainly my anniversary, and my partner's birthday, and then their holiday presents, so... Yeah, since they're not getting socks for Christmas, they get other things. And hopefully I can show you guys what those are too sometime, but I can't spoil it because by chance, if they are watching this before the reveal, I don't want them to know what it is or what they are. But yes. Um, not related, but just because I am who I am, uh, if any of you guys are into makeup, let me know if you have a mascara that you swear by that is cruelty free, because I've been on the hunt and I've never, well not never, but I haven't been as successful as I would like to be. Um, there's one so far that I have found works and that's the You Better Work by Essence. Um, it hasn't flaked. Really that's my concern. Well, okay, two concerns. Not clumping. I, I want my lashes to be separated and I can't stand when it flakes. And I've been testing all of mine. I have a few. And I've been testing all of mine every day <laughs> at work. I will time when I put it on and then when it starts to flake to determine if it's worth, you know, using like out. When I'm filming, it's fine because I'm not in front of the camera for hours and hours and hours. But if I'm like gonna run an errand or go run an air I'm like, what else do I do these days? Just run errands, um, and I'm gonna be out for a long period of time. I usually at least put, like, some mascara on and some shadow. I don't do, like, my base because it, it's under a mask and I just don't see the point. Um, especially if I'm not gonna take it off wherever I'm going. I don't, I don't do my base. I just put chapstick on, mascara, my brows, maybe some shadow. Definitely liner, but maybe some shadow. But I just don't want a flaky one, and I want one that separates my lashes, and it has to be cruelty-free, which also means it does not sail to mainland China, because mainland China still does have the test on animal requirement if there is something of like a complaint, it's not routine anymore, but if there is an issue, they they can pull the product and have it tested. And that still means they test, even though if it's not re uh, routine, it's still part of the law. So if you hear somebody say that they sell to China, then it's not cruelty free. Anyway, that was just my, my uh, my call 
to any of the makeup folks out there. But with this one, I am knitting my two by two until I reach 10 rows. And then I'm gonna do stitches, um, regular stockinette, because I realized that as much as I like the look of rib, I'm trying to be a little bit more efficient in my speed with these. And doing this back and forth business is slowing me down. And I noticed that when I was working on the other sock and I'm like, ah, I still need some rib just to hold it up on her leg, but I don't need to do it all the way down. It definitely gave it more structure having it ribbed all the way down, but my cousin, she's not so much like a sneaker person. She likes fancy shoes, though her boyfriend right now is very outdoorsy. So she has been wearing hiking boots more often than she used to, but she's definitely like a high heel lady. So these are more for like when she's doing her errands and wearing her her tennis shoes just out and about, but not like every day. She usually likes to dress up every day. But I'm glad that I'm getting around here pretty easily. Have you guys used this Chroma yarn by Knit Picks before? I don't know if it's if it's this. You know, honestly, I didn't read the reviews. So I'm not sure if other people have had the same issue or not, but um, it's kind of splitty. Not even kind of, it is very splitty. And I'm using pretty sharp, not like super, super like stab you and have to go to the hospital sharp, but there is definitely a defined point on these Chiaogu circulars that I'm using. They're a lot more pointy than my zings that I usually use because I, I tend to go back to DPNs once I start my decreases for the um, the toe because then it gets so tiny that I can't even like push the stitches around very well so I at that point I start to use the DPNs and I haven't had that part yet with this because this is the first sock with the chroma that I'm knitting but it's not the easiest to work with. It is a, a blend of superwash wool and nylon but I feel like the the wool is like too frayed like I don't know something about that combo maybe it's the combo or maybe it's the twist it could be the twist because i feel like it might not be it might not be tight enough because honestly when i look at it it kind of just once you work with it it's more just like bands and bands of string wrapped over the needle than like a twist of it and so i think that's why it catches so often because it's not very tight. Um, but, you know, I saw on sale, they were colors that spoke to me and to the people that I would be using them for. So I didn't spend too much time looking at the reviews at all. <laughs> Zero time, because I didn't look at them at all. But that could be also why they're on sale if the reviews were not that great. Like the colors are pretty, but maybe maybe the next ball I use will be better. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's the case. Um, but yes. I am going to be excited once I get into the other colors in here. I think these are going to be mismatch socks though because I 
don't want to waste the yarn to pull it out to get to this purple again. You know, depending on what it looks like when I do the toe, if there's a lot that I have to waste before I can get back to purple, I won't. But if it's like, I don't know, maybe a yard or two, I feel like I can spare that, but if it's any more than that, And that's just more like me feeling, uh, not so much completionist, but I think of like the socks that I knit for my brother's fiance for Christmas last year, and I tried really hard to have her start on the same, but maybe because my tension or something, they didn't end the same. They were very close, but they weren't symmetrical. See, I split my yarn again. I have to be careful. So, let me know if you feel that way. Do you prefer to have your socks start on the same color each time, or do you just keep knitting with the yarn until you run out? Are you, o well not, I wouldn't say OCD, but are you a little bit more of a completionist that way? Or does it matter to you? Let me know in the comments your thoughts on that. But, oh, we're coming close to the end here. I think we're just going to finish this round and call it a video, call it our Monday video. I hope you had a good weekend wherever you are, hope you did something fun. Um, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, on Wednesday's video, I'll tell you what I was up to. So I'll leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger, but it'll hopefully be worth it because you know I have stories I have stories but yeah there we go last two and then you know how I like to do it I like to get my stitch marker secure so I flip it and then I just knit the next two that I need to make that nice and even and hold it in place. We just have a little bit. So thank you so much for tuning in, watching, and I'll see you on Wednesday with the next video. Bye!